as wrestlers, we try to avoid going to the hospital as much as possible. So after the match, once my adrenaline wore down, that's when I realized that I was in some real pain. Like, I knew something was wrong, but I didn't think it was as serious as it was. I thought maybe I broke a rib because I couldn't breathe very well, or maybe I just got the wind knocked out of me really bad. But once the adrenaline wore down and I wasn't getting any better, I was actually getting a lot worse, that's when I knew, like, oh, man, like, this is serious. Like, there's something, like, really wrong here. So the first thing I tried to do, well, let me backtrack a little. I was laying down on a bench in the locker room, and I knew something was really wrong when I couldn't sit up from the bench. Like I was laying there still in my wrestling gear, and I couldn't just sit up. And I'm like, that's bad. <laughs> that's really bad. That's when I thought maybe I had broken a rib, because I'm like, I should be able to just sit up right now, and I can't. So I had to, like, roll over, and then I, like, somehow got myself out of my wrestling gear. And when I finally got out of my gear and changed into my clothes, like, I standing up was difficult. I'm walking around like an old man, and I feel very nauseous. And I thought, maybe I just need to, like, throw up or something. So I found, like, a dark corner outside of the arena, and I just started sticking my finger down my throat trying to make myself vomit. And it wasn't working. I couldn't puke. And the messed up part was people were coming up to me, but nobody like seemed that concerned. They were like, hey, man, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know if I'm okay, honestly. like I'm trying to puke, but it just didn't seem like anybody was taking how I was feeling too seriously. So about an hour had passed, and Ricky Marvin, who was hanging out at the show, and he's a good friend of mine, he came up to me and said, are you okay? And at this point, I had to just be real and stop trying to tough it out and just be honest. And I told him, no, I am not okay at all. And he looked at me and goes, you're white as a ghost. And then he ran back to get some paramedics. And the paramedics showed up. And as he was going to find the paramedics, that's when I finally threw up. So I went into like a, a toilet in the locker room, just started puking my guts out. And then after I had finished, that's when the paramedics were there, and they were like, yeah, get him to a hospital now. And they took me to the hospital. That's where I recorded the video that was on my documentary. I posted on all my social media. Recorded the video letting everybody know, hey, I'm being rushed to the hospital. Don't know what's going on. And when I got to that hospital, they hit me with a couple IVs, one with uh, some pain medicine, one with some anti-nausea medicine. But they didn't run any tests. They just hit me with the IVs, and then they said, I think you're okay. And the weird part was I actually felt okay. So I thought, oh, maybe I avoided disaster. I dodged a bullet. So they just released me from the hospital. That was probably the biggest mistake that I could have ever made was leaving that hospital because it was about a 30-minute drive back to my hotel and a very bumpy 30 minutes. And the more and more... I was bumping on that ride back. The more and more I started feeling weird again, and I started sweating, and I knew something was wrong, and I should not have left that hospital. So when I got back to my hotel, there was a bathroom in the lobby, and as soon as I got into the hotel, I just threw my bags in the lobby and went straight to that bathroom. And, yeah, pure blood in the toilet. It was not brown. It was bright red, and when I got off the toilet, I tried to walk out of the bathroom, and as soon as I grabbed the door handle, I just fainted, just collapsed on the ground, passed out, and I have no idea how much time passed, but eventually, on the bathroom floor, my head throbbing, because I'd smacked my head on the way down, I guess, and that's when I really started panicking, because I'm like, oh my God, I fainted. This is really bad. Not only have I just uh, used the bathroom and it was pure blood, but I've now fainted on the floor. I need to go to a hospital, like, immediately. And, yeah, that's when the hotel staff called an ambulance for me. And even though the hospital was one mile away, it took 35 minutes for the ambulance to show up. And when I got to the hospital... 
that's when they started holding me up for money, and it was just a big debacle. But hey, I survived. Sucks that I have this giant scar that's ruined my perfect six pack, but <laughs> at least I'm alive. 